You better tell me. Man, get the camera out of my face. Get away from me. I just swear to God, I'll tell you. <laughs> this is like not how this is supposed what? to work. You can't tell me why. This is for me. I got it on camera. I'm sorry. I've run every day. I'm sorry. Real reality television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Welcome. I'm Joey Greco. Thanks for turning on Cheaters. Please meet Courtney Jackson, a loving wife with suspicions about her husband's off-field activities and late nights. With anxiety at an all-time high, Courtney seeks the help of Cheaters investigators. Courtney Jackson, age 23. A wife and mother concerned about her husband's recent behavior and newfound apathy. He goes to play basketball Monday through Friday. On Sundays, he goes to play soccer. On Saturdays, he's going fishing. Yes, he goes fishing in the morning for about five or six hours straight. And he comes home with nothing. The biggest suspicion, basically, because he went to Chili's. There was a bill of like, it had to be like $35, $35.00. And 19 cents, if I'm not mistaken. I did not go to Chili's with him. I said, well, where did, when did you go to Chili's? Well, I went for lunch. Who would you go with? I went by myself and spent $35. No, that's not right. I know that's not right. This is the conclusion of my family. This is what I always wanted. But I, I tell you one thing, I don't need no man doing wrong doing stuff behind my back but I just hope I just pray that I do not find out that he is doing something if you suspect infidelity in your relationship cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance exercise your right to be informed Anthony Jackson, age 25, a semi-professional soccer player suspected of playing full press coverage with another woman. Investigation day three. Using a tip from a concerned Courtney, Cheater's detectives set up a perimeter around the park where the suspect practices. A few hours into their investigation, agents using a high-powered telephoto lens observe suspect Anthony Jackson playing a pickup game of soccer. After some intense play, the half ends, and suspect Jackson heads to the sidelines, where he receives a warm greeting and a refreshing sports drink from an unknown female. Now fully hydrated, the suspect gives his mystery woman a quick hug and heads back to the huddle to strategize with his teammates. Field operatives watch as the suspect's companion departs the scene. With some interesting questions raised, the second half of play begins, and operatives end this day of investigation. Investigation day five, operatives follow the suspect to a park where he grabs a spot near a group of vehicles. Detectives spy suspect Jackson as he exits his vehicle, grabs something from the passenger seat, and suspiciously gets into a nearby automobile. Once he disappears inside the vehicle, agents lose clear visual contact. But judging by what they can observe, the couple seem very familiar with each other. After running the car's plates, Cheater's gumshoes determine the companion's name. The suspect and his companion, whose identity remains withheld, talk at length within the cozy confines of the car. Sometime later, suspect Jackson grabs a basketball from his trunk and says farewell to his companion. As the suspect makes his way toward the court, his companion departs the scene, leaving detectives to ponder the nature of their relationship. Investigation Day 10. Detectives, using intelligence given by Courtney, stake out a park and wait for the suspect to surface. Agents spot suspect Jackson as he drives up the path and finds a parking space. Sometime later, a familiar vehicle pulls up beside the suspect. The companion from prior surveillance exits her vehicle and steps into Jackson's. After a short time inside, the suspect and his companion emerge, grabbing a fishing rod from the trunk and heading down to the pond. Being an avid fisherman, the suspect impresses his lady friend by hooking his line on a tree. Going all day without a bite, the suspect apparently decides to try his luck back in the car. 
Their view once again obstructed, Cheater's investigators can only speculate as to the activities inside. Sometime later, a disheveled companion emerges and straightens out her skirt. After a quick hug goodbye, she departs the scene. Left to his own devices, suspect Jackson's propensity to be untruthful is evident in this recorded telephone call with his wife, Courtney. Hello? What you doing? On my way to the park to shoot some hoops with the fellas. You know, they start at about 8 o'clock. I'll just call to see if I can come too. You know, not tonight. Tonight wouldn't be a good night. It's uh, a lot of my buddies out here tonight, and I don't you know how I feel about you being around a bunch of guys. So why I can't go? I, they know I'm with you. Well, you know how I feel about guys looking at you. You never want me to go to your game. Maybe the next game go with me. Okay, then. All right, I'll talk to you later. All right. Concluding the operation, Cheaters detectives prepare a summary for Courtney. Coming up, the confrontation. With clear betrayal evidenced in the surveillance, Cheaters contacts Courtney to present the deplorable findings. A weary Courtney joins our investigators to carefully review the evidence in hopes of a swift resolution. Courtney, thanks for being with us tonight. I know that the reason you initially contacted our show was because you've had some questions about what was going on in your relationship with your husband, Anthony. I know that you're here to find out what's been taking place when Anthony leaves the house. Are you ready to find out what our yes. detectives have uncovered? As our investigation started, we had a detective who was at the park where Anthony does go participate in the soccer games. At a break, he moves over to the sideline, greets a young lady who was at the game watching. They spend a few moments in quiet conversation. And just before she leaves, he leans in, gives her a quick hug before he goes back to the game. On this day of the investigation, we again observed Anthony as he arrived at the same park where he plays basketball. He arrives, takes a parking place, and in a short period of time, he's joined by the same young lady that we've seen on previous occasions. She gets into his car our this car. time. Yeah, our car. He grabs some things out of the trunk. It's obviously grabbed his fishing fishing. pole. And does he fish a lot? Because he gets yeah. hung up in a tree or anything. But he doesn't want to take me. When they return, they get back in the car. And this was as close as our detectives were able to to get as the young lady exits. You take some time to straighten yourself out. There's a quick embrace, and she's on her way. Earlier this evening, where did Anthony tell you that he was going? He said he was going to go play basketball. Okay. I'm going to check with our detective right now, and we'll see if we can find out exactly what it is that Anthony's doing. Gomez, what do you have? Okay, he is playing basketball at the park. The young lady that we've seen just arrived about five or 10 minutes ago. Right now, they're just sitting at the park. Okay, we're gonna load up and come right now. Hang on one second. Yeah. Uh, we just pulled into the park. They're sitting on a brick wall right next to the basketball court. All right, we're right behind you. Pull up a little bit and park to the left. Watch your step. Right up here. the other back Okay, with the headband. Anthony? What the f is going on? Anthony? Who is this you know bitch? Why we're here. Anthony, who the f is that? Who, who the f are you? Oh. Who the f is this? Who, what does it look like? I'm his wife. I didn't, I'm pregnant with him. Anthony, Anthony. Coming up next, the conclusion. Right now, they're just sitting at the park. 
guess it's true. Who is this bitch? Anthony, who is that? Anthony. Get out of my face, please. Anthony. Anthony. Well, you need to talk to me. What the hell is going on? Man. After four years, you're going to do this to me? Huh? Know, man. You do know. Who is she? I don't know what's going on. You know, okay. I didn't know this lady was here. Uh, you know what? That's all. Right. Watch out, guys. Anthony, we need to talk. Oh, oh, oh you the know, mic boy, man. How much they charge you? Are you okay? No. I don't know. Y'all be wrong if I throw water in your face, right? I cannot believe this. Get real. Look, he's just walking. He's just walking away. So that's how he feels about the whole relationship. Well, all y'all over. Stay back. Stay back. This is the park that we bring my son to on Sundays when he's not doing something. We'll bring him here. And this is where he brings his little. Back to the van, guys. Back to the vans. The detective just told me that he did get in his car. They tried to hold him up as, as best they could, but he did get in the car and leave. Well, at least I know the truth, right? You've got your entire lives ahead of you. That's true, but... Now, what what Anthony did, I'm not condoning. It clearly was inappropriate. Mm -hmm. He's a young man who can make mistakes. Shoot that. Oh. Shoot him oh. right there. Shoot him right there. There he is. There he is. Okay, let him come. Careful, let him come. Let him, let him come. come. Let him come. Don't scare him off. Okay, do you want to come out? Here she comes. They're not wasting their time. You did this to me. You did this to me. No. I wouldn't have to go through this if you would stop lying to me. You're always gone. You're never there for me or your son. And you know I need you there. And you're sitting here with some girl the whole time. You got this man right here, man. I know you got something better. Anthony. No. Every Sunday, you're taking her to your soccer game. All right, here, wait, hang on, Anthony. You're a liar. That's all you are, you're a liar. All right, you're oh, a liar. Well, well, hang on, that's you you're two getting cheater. out of the car. Okay, here it is. Anthony, you want to see it? Yeah, show me. Well, that's your car. So we know you can't fish. That's your car. Going fishing for four hours and you can't fish. That's you and her. Remember that? There you are. You guys Remember are that? kissing in our car. That's not me, though. That's not that okay. Well, here, you. let's let's get back. That's the let's... car, that's Anthony. The, I know what the me, car man. looks like, that's idiot. That's not me, man. She was already up here, and I just came up here to play ball, you know what I'm saying? She sat down in the water. She, she started talking, so I had a friendly conversation. That was it. How many days, Anthony? This is the same girl. I'm not stupid. All right, hang on. Let me let me show. OK, there's you again. You want me to show? Can, can I breathe? Be honest with your wife. Because I have more videotape, just tell me and, the and truth. I don't want—I don't want to rehash it because you know what's been going on. Anthony, just and tell me the truth right now. And all I'm asking you to right do now. is be honest with her. If you care about her, you have a family. Come That's on, your man. seed. Why y'all do it like this, man? Because you're a cheater. That's Come all on. you are. It's not even we right made there. we made vows. That doesn't mean nothing to you. Hey, you're you taking her to Chili's. Like I said, you're taking her you out to eat. To and you don't want to take me out to when eat. When you ready to talk, without the around, come talk to me. You know, he was my high school sweetheart. I thought, I thought everything was going to just be perfect. But now I know. I mean, I, I'm still ending up. It feels like I'm still ending up with nothing. Because now I know that he's been, I put all my trust into him. Well, I tried to. That, this is why I cannot trust him. It's all these late nights and then he's just, he's just a liar.
After the confrontation, Courtney assesses the situation with eyes wide open. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters reports on whether Courtney's marriage can endure. But now Cheaters presents Christina Eggers, a woman pulled into the Ben Govan case. Christina returns to discuss what happened the night she was contacted by Cheaters. Christina Eggers, age 30. Christina Eggers reflects on the malice that resulted from the confrontation on Cheaters. It was getting kind of late. I was getting ready to turn in, go to bed, um, get ready for work for the next day. And Ben calls me, sounding extremely frantic. I had no idea what was going on. Uh, he got me pretty worried. And I came out, um, I saw some footage of Kevin and Chris at a hotel and decided that I had to go and see what was going on. When they we are actually on our way to confront in the company of Kevin. Would you have any interest in joining us? Yeah. Okay. Well, I hadn't noted, noticed anything prior to going out there and witnessing that event. But afterwards, uh, Kevin and I had a lot of conversations. And um, basically, I gave him an ultimatum. I said, you know, you have to leave your job if you want to stay with me, and a lot of things have to change. This is good. This is good. Excuse me. This is working on her resume. I'm leaving. Okay. I saw what you were doing. You're such a liar. This is why I don't stay home much. Please just talk. Don't touch me. I'm serious. I won't touch you again. Just please let me talk to you. I'm not interested in anything that you have to say. I had met maybe once or twice before, seen her at company gatherings and whatnot, and I never would have considered her somebody that Kevin would have cheated on me with because was, she was his boss's wife. It just seems like a stupid idea. I don't understand why anybody would consider doing something like that. I mean, there's too much room for so much trouble to occur from it, which obviously did happen. Can we just go home and talk about this? No, I'm gonna stay with my parents tonight. I'm going to my parents' house. I will speak with him when we get home away from the oh, cameras. you're not going home. All you is gonna be on the sidewalk when you get home. I love you. Where are you going? You going to his house? Is that what you're doing? I'm sorry. I'm really glad I found out because I feel like it's opened up the lines of communication between me and Kevin. I think there are a lot of things that we didn't talk about before and now we're both making an effort to be more honest and communicative and I think that um, Kevin's really making an effort and I see him trying every day and it really makes me happy and I feel like we're doing the right thing. A deeply wounded Courtney Jackson first wailed about the thoughtlessness with which her husband treated their vows. Oh, you gotta tell me! Make you still care about my face! Get away from me! I just swear to God I'll go! This is like not how this is supposed what? to work. Just, you just tell me why. I just it on camera. I'm sorry. I've run every day. I'm sorry. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for watching this installment of Cheaters. Please meet Bill Kennedy, a man convinced that his wife of 20 years obscures the truth behind her recent activities. Ready to put an end to his speculation, Bill enlists the help of Cheaters detectives to settle the matter. Bill Kennedy, age 45. A business owner worried that his wife uses his long working hours to encourage another man's advances. Uh, I remember the night we met, it was at a George Jones concert, and uh, she's the most beautiful woman I ever saw. And we immediately hit it off. And it was just torrential love and good feelings. You know, she's out with the girls every night uh she won't answer her phone when she's out and why not if she's just out with the girls won't she answer her phone you know when i try to talk to her about this behavior uh basically she just kind of goes off uh 
She says, you're a control freak. Uh, you know, why do you want to know where I am every minute of the day? Uh, I'm not trying to be a control freak. I just want to know what's going on in my life, in my wife's life. I want to get my life back. I love my wife. And I don't want to believe that she's cheating on me. I want to believe that I'm probably just being a little paranoid. But if she is cheating, well, I don't know what I'll do then. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect's identity withheld, age 42. A homemaker suspected of leaving her family in the dark concerning her extramarital avocations. Investigation day four. Upon getting the call from headquarters, field agents assemble outside the suspect's home and set up for a stakeout. In search of hard evidence, cheater sleuths wait for movement outside. After several hours on the job, Cheater's PIs catch a break as an unknown male approaches the door and vanishes inside. A short time later, the suspect and her companion emerge, hop in her car, and take off. After a brief pursuit, the couple arrive at a nearby restaurant. The suspect, whose identity remains withheld, and her companion decide to adjourn to the patio. Broken only by an occasional drag off their cigarettes, the two alternate their attentions between their drinks and each other. Agents studying the couple carefully decipher from their body language that these two are well acquainted. After making short work of their meal, the duo stroll across the street to a well-known watering hole. Inside, the suspect and her companion grab a quick cocktail. As the night wears thin, the pair decide to call it a night. Once they arrive at the residence, they cautiously disappear inside. After a brief stay behind closed doors, the companion emerges and jumps into an awaiting car. Field operatives recognize the car as belonging to the suspect's son, Chris. With some new questions raised, operatives halt this day of investigation. Investigation Day 8. In the early afternoon hours, Cheater's detectives once again set up a perimeter around the suspect's residence. After several hours of inactivity, Cheater's PIs spot the suspect as she exits her house. With Bill busy at work, the coast apparently is clear for the suspect as she makes her first stop at a downtown parking lot. Cheater's detectives keep a keen eye on the suspect and soon notice another vehicle pulling into the relatively empty lot. Moments later, detectives watch as her youthful companion from prior surveillance approaches her car. Cheater's intelligence now positively confirmed her young companion's identity as her son Chris's best friend, Daryl Smith. The pair drive to a popular Chinese bistro. After filling up on Asian cuisine, the two depart to their next location. Cheater's operatives follow the suspect and her companion to a gin mill located in an upscale part of town. Upon arrival, they take a seat in the bar and down a few drinks. On the way back to the car, the couple, apparently still hungry from the Chinese fair, decide to snack on each other. The suspect then drops Mr. Smith at his car and heads homeward. Investigation day 12. An internal surveillance team stationed outside the couple's home watch feeds from motion-sensitive cameras placed inside by a troubled bill. The surveillance team outside spots Companion Smith as he approaches the door with what appears to be an overnight bag. Cameras inside record as the suspect, her son Chris, and his supposed friend, Daryl Smith, sit and watch a movie together. An hour or so into the epic, Chris evidently gets tired and retires to his bedroom, leaving the lovebirds to their own devices. The level of the suspect's deceit deepens as represented in this recorded phone call. Hey, hey what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Well, I just want to let you know I'm going to be out here another couple of days to get ready to finish up out of here. Oh. Wow, can't help it. It's what we got to do to make a living. Possibly, but I doubt it. Looks like too. Well, 
titillated by the taboo, the suspect apparently wants to act out a scene from The Graduate. But this Mrs. Robinson seems to have no problem seducing her young man. Acquiring all the information necessary for a definitive evaluation, Cheater's investigators halt the inquiry. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's outrageous excursions well documented, Cheaters arranges a session with Bill to go over the details of the investigation. Filled with anxiety, Bill prepares for the unabridged truth. And Bill, thanks for being here tonight. I know this is a very difficult and trying time for you and your family. I noticed that you brought your son Chris along with you uh, for some moral support. Are you prepared to see what our detectives have been able to find out about your wife's activities? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. As our investigation started, we see a young gentleman arrive, rings the doorbell, he entered your home, and a short time later is seen exiting with your wife. They depart and were followed until they arrived at a bar. Once inside, they have a few drinks. They weren't there too terribly long. Get back in the car and they go back to your house. After about 15, 20 minutes transpire, maybe a little bit longer than that, a car drives up. It smells fun. Chris, Chris, Chris. Come here. Yeah. Who is this? Was there an evening where you picked someone up yeah, it was from friend. your own home? It was Daryl. That's, that's one of my best friends. Really? Yeah. OK. On this day, our detectives were again outside your home. The same gentleman that we've identified as your, your son's friend arrives at your home. Midway through our investigation, do you recall when we had you place some hidden cameras inside of your home? I sure do. Your wife, son Chris, and his friend Daryl spent some time watching television or a movie. As the evening elapsed, your son, Chris, takes off. And because you didn't return, we pretty much assumed you went to bed. Because once they felt comfortable enough, they go into your bedroom. What the hell? Look at this. It's crazy. Let me check with the detective right now okay. and see what we can find out. It's your friend. Yeah, we just finished up with the briefing very well. Upset, but but hanging in. Tell me what you have. They met earlier this evening and are at a bar watching a baseball game right now. Okay, we're on our way right now. Okay, bye. Excuse me one second. Yeah. So we're gonna go right in the front. All right. They've been there and they've been drinking quite a bit. So I, I just be calm. Good. All right, we're yeah. not going to let this get out of hand. All right. Yeah. All right, we're coming up right now. I see you. Perfect. All right, guys, we're not jumping out, right? Slow. Here you go. Bill, come with me. OK, where are they? Where are they? Joe, you just got Joe, you just got Oh, where? OK. Go. What's up? Your son out here to see you. What's up, Daryl? No, we're just having a drink. Yeah, right. Well, guess what, honey? It's pretty much all over. We know all about this. Take care of business, son. No, no. No. Take care of it. What's, what, what's Chris doing here? Why is Chris doing Because he's no. kidding. He's taking care of it. No, it's not his fault. It's not his fault. No, there's something happening. Remember? No, there's something happening. He's just having a drink. It's my fault. It's OK. It's all right. Coming up, the conclusion. They go into your bedroom. 
Look at this. They're at a bar watching a baseball game right now. What's up? Take care of business, son. You didn't go to the counselor. To you didn't it's go to the counselor. You didn't do anything you're supposed to do. Because you're too busy with your little boy toy. Get your ass in the car and keep it. You got the car. You got the booze. Uh, no, get out of here. No, Leave him alone. Leave him alone. My son, no, yeah, well, no. I think you adopted please, his friend. Please. Let's go. Come on. Please. Just no. get away from us. Go get your car. I you got love your car. You, you got Chris, your booze. I love you. You please. got your dental work. You got everything. You got all the money you needed. Go. Get away. We're done with you. It's all right. It happens. It happens. It does. We're done with this. I love him. I misunderstood. I, I just, Joy, yes, I would have went. Okay, hang on, hang on. Chris is coming right now. Chris, I'm so sorry. I love your father. I'm so sorry. With Daryl? What are you thinking? I'm so sorry. I know he's your friend, and yeah, I'm so sorry. It's going to take us some time. It's going to take us some time. I'll do anything. Yeah. Tell your father I'll do anything. I will do anything. I love you, too. You know what? I, I don't know. You. I love you so much. I don't know. Much. That's, that's so pretty so bad. That's pretty bad. So With Daryl? I didn't know anybody else. I'm so sorry. 22 so years you just threw away. So All of us. He's a home wrecker. No, he's your friend. It's no, not, not his fault. It's not my buddy. It's not, your, it's not his fault. I did it. It's, it's my buddy. fault. Why don't we get you to head back in the van? Ready out of here for you, so. All right, cool. Well, here, you, know, it's, you want you to just head up there? Okay, watch out. Watch out. She's taking it. All right, yeah, let's just get you back this way. I know at the moment, you have to feel like your family's torn apart. There's a big part missing from it now. But I'd like for my boys, you know, to understand that a relationship isn't always turn out like this. There are good things in life. And being in love and having children, it doesn't always end up like this. This is an exception. After the confrontation, Bill tries to find a silver lining amidst the unpleasantness. At the end of the show, Cheaters explores how Bill fares in the months to come. But next, Cheaters presents the suspect from the Shea Ethan case. The suspect comes to Cheaters to make sure his side of the story is properly recounted. Suspect's identity withheld, age 45. The suspect stops by Cheaters to tell us how his experience on the show has been an influence in his everyday life. As far as me laying down and saying that I'm a, a, a bad person, uh, I don't think I, I'm a bad person. Uh, as far as uh, this episode here, from, I will always be on my guard for cameras and people in black shirts running my damn way when I'm uh, wherever I am and whoever I'm dealing with. Uh, hopefully, uh, this won't. I'm not admitting that I, I'll do this again, but I am saying that uh, my life will go on. Why have you been lying to me? Salty language isn't necessary. Okay, why have you been lying to me? Yeah, I just want some answers. That's, that's, What's that's, the answer? Well, so, I want some answers. I don't, I don't have why have you been lying to me? Tommy I was here. You have been telling me you're living in the United States. You work in the United States for a year, and you've been coming, flying in town, being with me, standing in my house. Are you serious? Playing with my baby, being a father figure to my baby, lying to me. Why are you making all these promises Look. to me? Only I love you. Trying to console, I love trying to you. No, I love you. That's all. I'm going to get a house with somebody. you. I'm going to move closer to you. What's going through my head is everything but the truth. I just didn't know what in the hell to say. You know how it is when you get caught? With your hand in the damn cookie jar, you don't know what the hell to say. And you know your hand's in the jar and you're still alive. Well, I got there, I was trying to find a lie to fix up, but that I could not do it. I, 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 it was just too much chaos. I don't know what you're talking about. Half the time, you don't know what I'm talking about. Look. 
Look, look, watch look. Out I can't watch take out. no more of this. Oh, what's going on? We're gonna straighten this out. We're gonna straighten this out. We're gonna straighten this out. I, I don't know this. I don't even know this. I don't even know what she's talking about. My wife and I, I doubt if this, we'll be able to work this out. But far as I feel, I don't feel I did anything really wrong. I, I just think I made a mistake and I deserve another chance. Uh, and I believe uh, uh, I'll get that. Whether I get it with my wife and Shay, I just have to. I, that, the, uh, that'll be known in the future. Look at that! She's showing me in my No, no, you gotta believe me too. You gotta believe me too. Look at him. You gotta believe me. 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 Come on. This lady's lying. You gotta believe me. Come on. No. Come on. Girls, I hope that you can come to reasoning. If not, then we gotta have to say goodbye. So this is my plea. I believe it, I believe there's uh, room for rehabilitation. Let's do it. If you don't want to do it, then be a woman enough to tell me. That's what I have to say to them. Bill Kennedy states that the life he knew will change due to the discoveries made by cheaters. Because of his wife's betrayal, Bill has filed for divorce. A heartbroken Bill says, I gave that woman everything she wanted, money, love, and the best years of my life. Bill's wife knows that she has a lot to answer for and claims that her recent fling was nothing more than a midlife crisis. Oh, you better tell me! Man, get some camera out of my face! Get away from me! I just swear to God, I'll show you. This is what I Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Greetings, I'm Joey Greco. Welcome to another episode of Cheaters. Please meet Raven Young, a troubled woman who suspects her boyfriend seeks the attention of another woman. Fed up with excuses, Raven seeks out the experts at Cheaters to investigate her concerns. Raven Young, age 26, an office worker worried that her boyfriend has filed her away in the outbox. I mean, in the beginning, we used to hump everywhere, here, there, anywhere, wherever he wanted it, it was going down. Whenever he wanted it, wherever he wanted it, in the most odd places, at the most odd times, he sometimes would come home in the middle of the day just to get some, and now, it's just nothing. We don't hump. We don't do nothing. We don't even, he doesn't even give me, you know, affection. There's several times he's lied to me and said, oh, I'm going to visit my mother or, or whatever have you. And I would call his mother's house where that's where he says he's going to be. And she says she hasn't spoken with him all day and he ha she hasn't seen him, you know, in a couple of days. So I found these in his car and they're open, some of them. All of them aren't even in the pack, so he say they're his homeboys. He left them in the car. He let his boy borrow his car. Well, if they are his homeboys, when his homeboys' fingerprints be on, not his, I want to know if his fingerprints are on these. I always told you in the beginning. I told you from the very beginning. If you don't want to be with me, there's something else that you want. It's something else that you want to do, and you don't want to be with us, hey, let me know. All you have to do is tell me the truth. Don't lie to me about anything, because if you lie to me, it's just going to make it worse. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Chris Haynes, age 29, a sanitation supervisor accused of cleaning up with the ladies. Investigation day two. Agents catch up with Chris as he putters through a residential area. Detectives in hot pursuit of the suspect trail him to an unknown residence. As the cheater's crew watches, suspect Chris Haynes exits his vehicle and ducks inside the mysterious domicile. Soon, the suspect emerges with an unknown female. Gumshoes tail the twosome to an all-night diner known for pancakes. Suspect Haynes and his date share some syrup while he appears to butter her up. 
Having their fill of hotcakes, the couple adjourned to their next destination. A few miles away, the suspect and his companion arrive at a movie multiplex. After taking in the latest love story, the duo walk hand in hand to the car. Cheater's agents follow the suspect and his companion back to her residence. Under the cover of night, the two disappear inside. Sometime later, the suspect resurfaces and departs. Investigation Day 5. On a hunch, a team of operatives stake out the residence from prior surveillance. The chancy move to watch the companion's home pays off when field operatives spot the suspect heading inside. Sometime later, the suspect and his companion, whose identity remains withheld, emerge and drive away. Suspect Haynes apparently decides to treat his companion to a shopping spree at a discount supercenter. Cheaters inspectors follow the duo inside to see just how much suspect Haynes shells out for his lady friend. The suspect shows his indifferent attitude toward Raven in this recorded telephone call. After an elongated stay inside, the suspect returns to his car and takes off. Investigation Day 11. Once again, Cheater's detectives track the suspect to the companion's place of residence. Agents make visual contact with suspect Haynes as he enters his companion's home. Sometime later, the two depart. Cheater's detectives track the couple to a local billiards bar. Inside, undercover agents deploy micro cams that show suspect Haynes and his companion less interested in the game than in each other. Upon completion of the game, the two soon make their way back to the companion's abode. About 30 minutes later, a statuesque figure approaches the door. Detectives, curious about the nature of this beauty's business, send operatives to get a closer look. Through a window, detectives watch in awe as the unknown female performs seductive dances for the couple. After their private dancer hits the road, these two fired up philanderers make a beeline for the bedroom. With a final piece of evidence to bring suspect Haynes to justice, Cheaters PIs head to headquarters to compile their findings. Coming up, the confrontation. With Chris's infidelity set in stone, Cheaters expedites the information to Raven. Prepared for the gravity of the situation, Raven is ready to study the surveillance carefully. Raven, we appreciate you being here this evening. Uh, I know that the last few months have been kind of rocky in your relationship with Chris. And I know this is something that you're not going into lightly. Are you ready to take a look at some of that information? Yes. As our investigation starts, Chris was followed until he arrived at a residence. Chris gets out, goes to the door, spends a short period of time there before he's seen exiting with another young woman. They were followed until they arrive at a restaurant that's well known for flapjacks and, and assorted syrups. And there we do have a visual of Chris inside with this young lady as they dine. Once they completed dinner, they did walk out, were followed to a movie theater. There you can see briefly that they're holding hands as they go in. Our detective did stay on site throughout the movie, and as they left, we again see them holding hands. On this evening, they were followed until they arrived at a billiard hall. They spent some time shooting pool, and after a few hours there, they return back to the home of this young lady. After a while, another young lady arrives. Our detective was able to capture some activity we can only assume is a precursor to events that will take place later that evening. 
that young woman was only there for about an hour, maybe a little bit more. After she left, Chris and his lady friend retire. I don't want to see no more. That's enough. You had found a box, box of prophylactics inside Chris's car. Right. With the evidence that you provided us with, our detectives dusted for prints. Excluding your fingerprints, the only other prints that were found on that box were Chris's. I'm gonna call the detective right now and see if we can find out exactly where he is right now, okay? Just a type one second. You're gonna be all right? Okay. Yeah, we just finished up with the briefing. Tell me what you have. They, dropped, they just arrived at a pool hall. You have one, someone on the inside? All right, we're gonna load up and come right now. You ready to go? Come with me this way. We've got a detective outside. It's the clicks on Skillman. There's a detective outside, and we've got one inside as well. Okay. As we go into the pool hall, they're sitting in the back left corner. Okay, terrific. We'll be there in about, I think, 15 seconds. All right. There's a detective should be in the parking lot as we pull in. Yeah, there's a detective right there. Okay, come on. Coming up next, the conclusion. They just arrived at a pool hall. You want to deny my baby? No, baby, what the hell you talking about? Close to knocking your ass out. 
Knock me out. Now get your hands out. Get your hands out. You know, if you if you need a ride home, we'll have a detective take care of you. Yes, please, because I'm not getting in the car. I'm not getting in the car. Okay, we'll have a detective and they'll take care of you and get you. I'm very sorry. I did not know. It's cool. I'm so sorry. I ain't even tripped. I didn't even know. Here, ho. You know what? You won't even. You won't even. You you still am trying to act like you don't know her. Still trying to act like you don't know her. Damn, she's still talking. Damn. It's mine. Car is mine. You got it on tape. I don't give. Don't call me. What is going on here? Where's the justice at, man? I tell you, you got my faith, huh? huh? Did... Okay. I take her. I take her. Tell her come on. You'll never experience life to its fullest unless you know how to love. It makes me want to like build up a wall, not to trust anybody. It makes me want to teach my kids not to trust anybody, you know, just so easily, you know, get to know that person and, you know, okay. find out what they're really about first. But you know that's what you have to fight against. Yeah, because the heart, it make you do crazy things. Following the confrontation, Raven attempts to put everything into perspective. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters unveils her final thoughts. But now Cheaters welcomes back the companion from the Chad Cash case. Willing to come forward, the companion speaks candidly about his actions on the day of the confrontation. Identity withheld, age 29. The companion explains his part and defends his love for the suspect. Honestly, I think a little a little fear went through my head when he came busting through that fence. Uh, I kind of knew the game was up, except the fact that he lunged at me. I don't usually handle my affairs in that sort of manner. Frankly, I turned pretty angry and uh, really lost my cool. Come on, guys, gentlemen. Watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch out. Get in there, get in there. Get him out! I'm gonna kill you! You shut up, bitch! Get in there! Shut up, bitch! Come on, boy! I took in consideration that she was married. Um, basically, that's how the relationship started off. She and I have a wonderful relationship today. Um, and with the events happening as they were, I honestly see what kind of man he really is. I, I blame him for how all this came about. I don't feel guilty for what I've done. I want you out. This is our household. This is our, our house. house. And you bring this piece of You just sit here by it's myself while my you're working out. You think I am you. you. All of you people. All of you. You, you bum freak. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Come here. Stop! Stop! Do not hurt him! Do not hurt him! Take him and get out of here. Just, just get out! Get out! I'm sure Chad is pretty upset about this whole situation. I, 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 I probably would have been too. I don't really have much to say to him, and I don't care to see him either. Yeah, I just, I just don't care for the fellow at all. But if I had to apologize, uh, if I had to be the bigger man and apologize for my side of it, I still don't think I could do it. I can't even get out of my driveway! Okay, all right. Close the doors. Get in your car. Don't put it past me. I swear to God, I'll take you all out. I have never felt this way about anyone in my life. And it's all gone pretty quickly. They're going to be divorced soon. We're already engaged. Uh, I'm really excited. Couldn't foresee this happening, but we're going to be married and we're going to live a happy life together. Legitimately taken aback to learn that Chris had cheated, Raven Young now tries to move ahead. Looking past her feelings of betrayal, Raven hopes to better the situation for herself and her children. 
Redefining her life, Raven has decided to focus on what she wants and put men on the back burner for a long while. With her children by her side, Raven looks forward to this new chapter in her life. You better tell me! Man, get the camera out of my face! Get away from me! I swear to God, I'll show you! <laughs> this is, like, not how this is supposed what? to work. This is the only one. Just remember. I got it on camera. I'm sorry. I've run every day. I'm sorry. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Welcome. I'm Joey Greco. Thanks for turning on Cheaters. Please meet Doris Warren, a devoted wife worried that her husband has begun an illicit relationship with another woman. Wanting the facts, Doris contacts Cheaters for answers. Doris Warren, age 44. The housewife worried that her husband courts another woman during his overtime hours. I've known him for a little over 20 years, and we dated off and on, and then we got married, and we have two children. On an average, he's been telling me that he's going in, working double shifts three to four nights a week, and uh, I've just seen a difference in his attitude. He's been very distant. Uh, we don't communicate as much as we used to. Um, he's not as loving as he has been in the past, and I recently found a check stub when, um, according to the check stub, it shows that he's just been working minimum amount of hours, and I suspect that he's having an affair. When he comes in, um, he'll eat dinner, he'll look at TV, look at sports channel. Uh, we don't really talk a lot. I try to uh, try to have a conversation with him, and his answers are very short. You know, like yes or no, or he may nod his head. And it seems as if he's really into looking at, you know, whatever is on the television. But he's not really open with me anymore. My son has suspicions. He asked me why is his dad never at home? Why is he, does he always have to go to work? Where is he? He tries to call him on the cell phone. And he's not able to reach him and he gets upset because he hardly ever sees his dad and he only ever spends time with him. And I see the hurt and pain, and he's even asked me, Mama, do you think my dad has another girlfriend? I want to be wrong, but I don't believe that I am. Honestly, I don't believe that I am wrong. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect's identity withheld, age 46. A transportation supervisor accused of dispatching his affections to someone new. Investigation day four. Agents tail the suspect as he drives through a residential district. Detectives follow the suspect to an unknown house. After parking his car in the driveway, the suspect exits his vehicle. Agents watch the suspect, whose identity remains withheld, as he paces back and forth while talking on his phone. Field operatives note the suspect has what appears to be an overnight bag in his hand. Cheaters gumshoes get word from headquarters that the suspect is talking to his wife, Doris. After completing his conversation, the suspect finally enters the strange residence. This leaves Cheaters investigators with a lot of unanswered questions. Investigation Day 6. With Doris's help, agents peruse the suspect's phone records. As suspected, one of the phone numbers listed matches the address from the previous day. Detectives return to watch the house. After a few hours into the stakeout, agents spot an unknown vehicle. The driver pulls into the garage of the residence, and the vehicle quickly disappears behind the closing garage door. A short time later, an unknown man emerges and appears to take out the trash. Again, the door swiftly closes behind him, leaving detectives with little to work with. Moments later, the suspect arrives at the house and vanishes inside. After a brief respite indoors, the suspect re-emerges with his companion, whose identity remains withheld. The couple get into the vehicle and depart the scene. 
A few hours later, the duo return home. Before heading inside, the companion backs her car out of the garage, which allows the suspect to park his car in the other car's place. After this game of musical parking spots, the couple retire inside the companion's house, where they remain for the duration of the night. The next morning, operatives working the early shift spot the companion grabbing the morning paper. The companion heads inside, and Gumshoes notice the suspect's car still parked in her garage. Investigation Day 10. On stakeout in front of the companion's residence, Cheaters detectives watch the garage door open. Carefully monitoring the scene, agents spy the suspect getting into his vehicle. Moments later, detectives notice the companion backing up her car. And just like before, the suspect swaps cars in the garage. Duplicity and deceit seem to suit the suspect, as displayed by this recorded phone call with his wife, Doris. With confirmation of her husband's improprieties, Cheaters prepares a report for the disillusioned Doris. Coming up, the confrontation. With conclusive evidence of the suspect's deception in hand, Cheaters contacts Doris to break the news. With a heavy heart, Doris prepares herself for the truth. Doris, thank you for being here tonight. I know you've waited quite some time to find out the information that our detectives have. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to take a look at that now? Yes. As our investigation started, he left work and was followed until he arrived at a residence. Before he goes in, he spends quite some time on the phone. He did spend a considerable amount of time at that residence that evening. On this day, we had a detective that was stationed outside of this residence. We do observe a woman pull in. There's this period of time that transpires before your husband arrives at that location. He comes out. The young ladies with him, they take off. As they returned, we see a little swap thing happen where the woman backs her car out of the garage, your husband backs into the street, and what happens is she leaves her car in the driveway and he parks in the garage. They go on inside from that standpoint. Yep. You I recognize see. That? Okay. Yeah. The next morning, our detective was there, and as the garage door was opened, you can see that... He's still there. He's still there as she came out to get the morning paper. My suspicions were true. And your intuition was correct. Yeah, very correct, as I see. I'm going to go ahead and contact the detective right now, and I'll see if he can give us an update on your husband's whereabouts. Okay. <laughs> Gomez. Tell me what you have. Okay, Gomez is at your home, but all the lights are out right now. Okay. Okay, we have a detective at your house, and we have a detective at the other location. All right, we're just going to load up and be on standby. Ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Come on. I think Detective Gomez is here, and he may have an update for us. Okay, let me explain to you what's going on right now. We have a detective sitting in front of your house who watched your husband leave for work this evening. We've had another detective sitting at the companion's house waiting for your husband to show up. Now, your husband usually shows up between 10 and 10.30. It's midnight right now, and it doesn't appear he's going to show up tonight. So what we're going to do is go ahead and cancel this for tonight and try it again really soon. No, we tried this last week, but we were unsuccessful, as sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. Have you spoken with your husband tonight? Yes. 
or what did he say? He said he was at home going over some paperwork with my son-in-law. You did give a detective some information. You know what type of a truck your son-in-law drives. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. The detective drove by the house and was your son-in-law's vehicle there? No. Our detectives continued to investigate and follow your husband. Your husband has been continuing to spend time at the home of this other young woman. I'm going to check with the detective right now, as we have reason to believe that your husband is not at your house. Okay. Gomez, tell me what's going on. Joey, go to Polo and carry your parkway and sit there. I've ordered a wrecker. What the wrecker's gonna do is meet me outside the companion's house where I'm at right now. And from there, he's gonna turn the lights on, start making some noises with his wrecker, and hopefully, Doris's husband will come outside. If he doesn't, I'm gonna go knock on the door and ask for him, and inform him that there's a wrecker driver in front of his yard. Once you see the signal, roll up as quickly as possible with your lights off. Okay, I'll see you in a minute, bye. Ms. Warren, we're now at the staging area where Gomez wanted us to wait. And here comes the tow truck that he spoke to us about. All right, everybody, listen up. Be very quiet, be very careful. Headlamps off until we get our subject. We've got a small window of time. When Gomez gives a signal, we're gonna have to move and we're gonna have to move quickly. How am I gonna get to him? Well, the tow truck's making enough noise where if the suspect was awake, I'm sure he'd stick his head out the door. Yeah, there goes Gomez. That looks like the sun. That looks like the sun. There they are. Okay, wait, let, let him get out a little bit farther. That's the signal. Yeah, there we go. This dude's big. Makes me scared. What the hell are you doing here? What 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 are you doing here? Coming up next, the conclusion. Your husband has been continuing to spend time with this other young woman. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? You're supposed to be at home. You're supposed to be at home. Hey, Luke, don't touch no, you're supposed to be at home. You my husband and you laying up. What you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing here? Did you know that he was married? No, 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 come on. I want to, I want to see her. We I want to confront her. We can her. talk to her, talk to her from here. We're not going to get you guys. Guys, come on out. Come on. Oh, good and damn well he's married because she called my house. Okay. And I know whose house this easy, is. Easy, easy. I know easy. whose house this is. Easy. I know. Well, yeah, you're you're what, you're is easy. what is this? What is this? You easy, forgot, easy. Hey, 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 hey. You hey, forgot hey, you were you were That's why we're What is this? Yeah. Uh, what is this? Come on now. Come on now. All that. We're together. Yeah, we are. You are lying. That's why you told me that you were lying. You said you were You told me you were lying. You said 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 you were You said you were lying. You said you were lying. You said you were lying. You said you we have. We have. You lying, bitch. You a lying punk. You a lying punk ass, bitch. That's why you here. You two times. Leave me alone. Just don't touch me. Okay. Let's get you. Let's walk out this way. Who are my shoes? I know he's been coming over here. I know you've been coming over here. I know you've been coming over here. Hey, I've been in California. Son, but we ain't married. Trying to lay up with me, but we ain't married. We ain't married, you lying bastard. I'm going to love you till the day I die. Nobody will ever take your place, you lying bastard. That's what you told me. Now
Now, you want to lie to me and tell me we ain't married? No, you all about truth, remember? The truth. Let's hear the truth. He's mad because his ass done got caught. He's supposed to be the player. Now the game has been played and is it's been played in his head because he's been playing this stupid game. Following the confrontation, Doris decides whether her relationship can weather the storm. Later in this program, she discloses her course for the future. But first, Cheater speaks with April Holmes. April returns to discuss how her experience on Cheaters made her assess what's really important in life. April Holmes, age 29. April speaks her mind after volunteering to come forward to explain her position. Well, when the crew first came in, I was stuck in the box. I had David yelling at me. I was like, oh my God, what's going on? What are you guys doing? I'm Hey, no, what the Mortimer, 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 what? what? No, what are you doing with my girlfriend? Your girlfriend's in a illusion. Yeah, what? Get back. With the pad. Mortimer, who are these people? Well, looking back on it, it was a shock at first, and it hurt me that he went to that far lengths to do that, but it was kind of a nice gesture for him to do that because it made me feel that he really did love me, and that's something that he didn't make me feel for a long time. Settle down, guys. Settle down, guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, relax. 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 Rel sort of reminds me of a cult leader in that fact. He tries to keep you the way he wants you. Do you sleep with all your assistants? Is that part of the, the trial process? Is that part of the interview process? <laughs> do you do that a lot? Um, it's a common thing once in it's a while. A Depends. Thing. Okay. Is that, why you, went, is that why you went into his house and acted like his friend? And when he asked you if anything was going on, you said, no, don't worry about it? Is that why you lied to him? Um, is that part of the illusion? It's a secret. It's magic. This experience has changed me so much that I know who I am now, and I know it's good to be in love. And I know he'll love me forever, and I'll love him forever. Doris Warren has not yet fully recovered from the malevolent actions of her husband. Doris admits it may take time to purge herself of her spouse's memory. Doris has refused all requests to reconcile with her husband and has begun divorce proceedings. The 